The main pillars being developing people, partnership, operational priorities, infrastructure, and performance. His Excellency, from the time I have joined the force to what it is today, I've seen significant movement towards modernization and significant recapitalization on the assets of the Guyana Police Force. So I'll be talking about enhanced prof professionalism at this conference. And we look for our guidance from the Constitution, Chapter 16 and 1701 of the Laws of Guyana. The, the resolution of the United Nations General Assembly, 26 of 179, which will happen on the 17th of December 1979, that deals with the Code of Conduct for our law enforcement officers. And Standard Order 12, which has 50 different areas that deals with appearance of conduct. We intend to rigidly adhere to these principles and to ensure that the training goes right down to the bottom and people understand what really is expected of them in our service to the public. For partnership, one of our main focus is community policing and station management committees. However, in community policing, we understand it encourages a bond between police ranks and the communities they serve. It helps in knowing the general. It helps in knowing the general citizen, understanding their needs, habits, and wishes, so they can truly relate to the communities in order in order to understand their problems and offer creative responses. It will help to deal with problems in communities at an embryonic stage. There is an old Cherokee saying, if you listen to the whispers, you won't have to hear the screams. And community policing is one of the vehicles used by the Guyana Police Force to feel the nuances of the communities so we can preempt and deal with issues before they get out of hand. We also have in our partnership, our alliances with the private sector, the joint services. We work assiduously with scout and youth groups and have outreach programs. Strategic management, according to Harry Moore and others in the book, Organizational Behavior and Management in Law Enforcement, they state, and I quote, the strategic management style is similar to those found in business organization and encompasses vision, mission, values, goals, engagements, accountability, outcomes, and evaluation. This style allows police executives to proactively develop and implement organizational directions that allow departments to successfully initiate and reshape their activities in order to effectively meet the demands 
of their operational environments. So last but not least, in effective leadership. We have what we call unity in command and selection and maintenance of the aim. And we take into cognizance the word of, words of Khalil Gibran. And he said this, pity the nation divided into fragments, each fragment deeming itself a nation. We have looked at it down to the level of the force. And that within the force is, there will never be a canopy within the force, within the force. However, each unit works in unity and we synergize to ensure that we have the desired outcome. John Maxwell, one of the leading authors on leadership positive, a personnel determines the potential of an organization. Relationships determine the morale of the organization. Structure determines the size of the organization. Leadership determines the success of the organization. He also said great leaders exhibit a trait. And that is a trait of humility. We have seen the leaders of humility, though in some books people might say they are soft, but humility and service. And from them we have leaders like Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela. On the flip side, we have other leaders where arrogance, jealousy, insecurity are part of their psyche. Arrogance and the lust of power gave us despotic leaders like Idi Amin and Hitler. So, in leadership, great leaders are men with a heart. And as Maxwell rightfully said, if you want to measure a leader, put a tape around his heart, not his head. So there were three political leaders at the beginning of an election campaign. And these were the words. The first said, I walk alone. The second said, I walk with God. The third said, I walk with the people. His Excellency, I can assure you that the Guyana Police Force and the representatives and persons within the Guyana Police Force will live according to their oath of office. That is, with the help of God, we will continue serving the people. Sir, so, I now have the pleasure of inviting a humble man with a big heart to make some re remarks and introduce His Excellency. This person is no other than Commissioner of Police Acting, Mr. Leroy Brahmin, DSM. I would extend a hearty welcome, Your Excellency, for once again taking time off from your busy schedule to be here at our conference. Thank you. As mentioned by the conference chairman, you will observe that our conference team is advancing institutional modernization to secure our communities through enhanced professionalism, partnership, strategic management, and effective leadership. to see where we are and to know where we ought to be. Yes, we will analyze and review our operations, our policies, our administrative procedures, and plan for the future in keeping with our mandate 
under the police act of the laws of the land. I must come with some stats. During last year, we had an overall decrease of 1% in serious crimes compared to 2011. In terms of murders, we recorded a total of 137 murders in 2012 compared to 130 in 2011, an increase of 5%. Of the 137 murders that we had last year, 62 were of the disorderly type, 11 were committed during armed robberies, 24 domestic related, 9 were execution type, and 31 were on target. Robbery and armed son overall increase of 21% compared to 2011, with an increase of 16% in armed robberies involving the use of firearms, and a 30% increase in armed robberies where instruments other than firearms were used. Well, the other than firearms, you have knives, cutlasses that were used by the perpetrators. We, however, have significant decreases in larceny from the person, the other 21% here, burglary by 18%, and break and enter larceny by 10%. We have been working assiduously in relation to our fight against crime through robust patrols, roadblock operations, I know we sometimes inconvenience the persons, raids and searches, and an Intelligence network was bolstered by the Divisional Crime Intelligence Unit and Computerized Integrated Crime Information System established under the Citizen Security Program. This is part of the Forces Modernization Plan. Your Excellency, on to March 4 this year, we have recorded an overall 1% decrease in serious crimes in comparison to the same period in 2012. So there has been a decrease by 6% in armed robberies. However, murders have shown an increase of some 17% when compared to the same period last year, with 21 murders this year compared to 18 last year. I think we have 22 now. Within recent years, the police have been able to dismantle a number of criminal gangs. And while presently no such gang has been identified, we continue to work through intelligence-led policing to interdict those criminal elements involved in armed robberies, especially with illegal firearms brought into the country to our expansive borders which pose some difficulty to law enforcement. Here, I wish to express appreciation for the invaluable, invaluable assistance being given to the police by members of the various community policing groups on a voluntary basis and the neighborhood police personnel in the fight against crime. I expect that upon the installing of a new national community police and executive, at the upcoming annual general meeting that this partnership will be further strengthened. So in advance, I thank you. Firearms seized for the year 2012 amounted to 111. 28 were pistols, 39 revolvers, 31 shotguns, and 13 rifles. You know our largest haul for the year that was then ENF Division, where we seized four AK-47 rifles and six M M16 rifles in Tabatinga. That's in the Latin area. And we also seized a quantity of ammunition, grenades, and radio sets. The Ghana Police Force is fully aware of gold mining emerging as one of the country's economic pillars and a major contributor to the GDP of this country. Significant efforts have been and continue to be made in the policing of our E and F policing divisions, where these activities are centered. During last year, a decision was taken to delink 
the ENF division. Now the division comprises of Linden, Wakwani, Aichuni, Aroimo, Maburo. YF division includes all the areas in the interior. And we have two senior officers in charge of those two divisions. The divisions have been merged during 1992, but the dynamics have changed considerably since then with the prevailing developmental and economic activities and the concomitant shift in population. The separation of the divisions will allow for greater focus on the challenges of each division and the more effective utilization of our resources. We are concerned over the armed robberies committed on miners and mining camps and the disorderly murders occurring in the gold mining areas of the interior. During last year, 24 of 62 disorderly murders occurred in the then EMF division. So far for this year, four of the nine disorderly murders were committed in F division. And there have been a number of armed robberies on miners. As recent as two Fridays ago, in the Oman area, some men attacked a dragon. And during the course of the robbery, they killed a Brazilian. They shot him. In continued efforts to effectively police the division, and the cognizant of the expanse and the type of terrain which affects response to reports. I must mention that we have a number of checkpoints established in the division. We have frequent roving patrols, we have stop and search operations, and we have been working closely with the Ministry of Home Affairs, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment, the Guyana Gold and Diamond Miners Association, the Geology and Mines Commission, and other stakeholders to ensure more effective management of these areas. Recent discussions have paved the way for a number of decisions being taken that should positively impact on the security of the interior. These include the increase of police presence to the establishment of police outposts at strategic locations, the intensification and expansion of the roving patrol to include the Guyana Defense Force. Yes, Chief of Staff, we'll, we'll be in touch. Are we already in touch? A review of the firearm license application and approval process with a view to expediting applications by the minors. The establishment of a police GG DMA Communication Intelligence Network, the Hinterland Intelligence Committee. We've had two meetings so far for this year, one in January, one in February, and we sometime next week there's the other meeting. Um, there's also the month, that's a monthly meeting. Um, there's also the meeting where the GG, DMA, and the Commissioner and appropriate ranks meet. And this concludes with a quarterly meeting between the Ministry of Home Affairs and the GGDLE. Also, a proposal talked included a crackdown on illegal shops suspected of harboring elements in gold mining areas. The acquisition of a floating outpost, the formation of community policing groups, and appointments of supernumerary responsible for mining establishments. We continue to work diligently against the illicit drug trade. And during last year, 80 kilograms, 586 grams of cocaine were seized by the police during operations. Um, 115 cases were made, 124 persons were charged. That's as it relates to marijuana. That's as it relates to cocaine. Um, a total of 1,929 kilograms, 909 grams of cannabis were seized and destroyed 493 cases for 540 persons charged. Along with intensified collaboration with local and regional international law enforcement agencies, 
we will continue to maintain our focus on the fight against it. Your Excellency, in relation to traffic, there has been a 4% reduction in road fatalities for 2012 in comparison to 2011. With 110 fatalities in 2012 compared to 115 in 2011. The 110 road deaths last year is the lowest figure recorded in 43 years, and I'm not proud of that because it, it is the lives are being taken every year and you have to be careful on it. So I am not happy in reporting this, but I must mention. In 1969, the total number of road fatalities was 169. The previous lowest was recorded in 2008, when 130 persons lost their lives on our road. During the last year, in addition to traffic education programs, which includes traffic lectures to schools, enforcement operations by the police traffic department, for the most part, they focus on speeding, driving under the influence of alcohol, on licensed drivers, reckless and negligent driving, inconsiderate driving, and cell phone use when operating motor vehicles. At the 11th of March, 22 persons have lost their lives on the roads today, compared to 21 for the step period last year. Speeding continues to be a major contributing factor to fatal accidents, causing 78 of the 102 accidents during 2012. The statistics indicate driving on 14,877 14, cases were made for speeding and 980 for driving under the influence of alcohol. Standing instructions have been issued to all drivers involved in motor accidents to be tested with the use of the breathalyzer as soon as possible. And in addition to driving under the influence of speeding, this year more emphasis will be placed on traffic education through the use of the print and electronic media, dealing with the use of cell phones, driving while drinking while drinking and driving, tilting motor vehicles and touting. While the police will continue to place significant focus on traffic education and enforcement, I wish to call on more tourists and other road users to be cognizant of the five C's. Care, courtesy, consideration, common sense, and caution. Sometimes you see these fellows driving on the road, the only thing that see these fellows dunce how oh, they oh, are operated in the on the road. Tons. We see pedestrians walking three and four abreast, sometimes not facing the oncoming traffic. We see motorists motorist on motorcycles, sometimes with another adult. And two or three children, they're trying to save that five, they're supposed to buy a car. They can't have a motorcycle carrying five horses. We see motorcyclists on motor, motorcyclists riding, and they have pillion riders with no help. Sometimes I shudder to think what would happen if the legs of some of those small children that they have there in the vehicles got caught between the spokes of that moving motorcycle. Is that motorist waiting for the police to tell him or her of the existing danger? Does he or she not recognize that? It is noted that efforts are being made to the Guyana Revenue Authority also to as long as practical to do away with the present book format for driver's licenses and replace them with plastic cards. This is a welcome step in a positive developmental way. In the same breath, I wish to express as appreciation for the invaluable assistance that continues to be given to the police by the National Road Safety Council, the Ministry of Home Affairs, the Ministry of Works, and other stakeholders in our effort as we regard the use of the road by our road users. The Guyana Police Force wishes to express its deep appreciation for the show of confidence and tangible support being given by the government to the Ministry of Home Affairs in order that we can carry out our mandate
and maintain the public safety and security of the country. There have been many significant demonstrations of this, principal among which are the reforms under the, security, the Citizen Security Program and the much anticipated and implementation of the five year strategic plan. The institutional modernization of the Guyana Police under the Citizen Security Program has benefited the force tremendously and assisted significantly with the professionalism and quality of service. A total of 18 police stations have been refurbished and remodeled with special rooms to allow for privacy when dealing with domestic violence, ID parades, so yes, domestic violence. We have to do that privately. We can't let everybody here, especially when men are being beaten by boys. Interviews, case management in keeping with international best practices. A computer center was established at the Felix Austin Police College for the training of ranks as it relates to information technology. And a modern training facility has been completed within a short while. And another facility which is being um, looked at in G Division will be completed shortly. In excess of 300 police ranks, from constable to assistant commissioners, or senior, very senior officers have completed a comprehensive training program with the U.S. consulting entity, the Mortens Group. The integrated crime information system, which is an electronic data management system, encompassing police division was established and will allow us to track criminal activities and establish trends based on acquired data. A state-of-the-art forensic laboratory is presently under construction, which will bring us on par with those in the other developed countries. It will provide analyses and conduct tests and present, present critical evidence in crime-related activities and will have an impact on us as we try to solve crime. Through the community action component of the Citizen Security Program, which was relaunched in February 2010, with the objective of promoting social development programs in response to the prevailing crime and violence rate in Ghana, police ranks have been able to develop direct relationships with youths and other residents in 10 communities a, B, C division, 10 communities were identified. Which we hope will strengthen the professionalism of ranks in dealing with social matters and contribute to the lessening of frustration of residents in the communities and promote the involvement of community members in crime reduction. The goal of the CAC which came to an end in 2012 was to assist the 10 communities involved to become sustainable in their function as a neighborhood in which all persons are included in the creation of a safe environment and the young people are provided with opportunities that prevent them from participating in criminal and violent activities. Our involvement with the community action component has been seen as an en enhancement of the police community relations in the communities. To promote community respect and develop in greater trust and confidence in the between the police and the um, members of the public. We in the Guyana Police Force are integrally involved in the implementation of the strategic plan 2013-27, which was drawn up by the UK based Consultancy Capital Simmons as part of our security sector reform, which will see significant focus in four areas in the initial phase of the, of the police force. These are in administration, succession planning, integrity, poverty, and public relations. The Guyana Police Force welcomes the initiative, which also places focus on the training of ranks both locally and overseas, in order to complement the reforms that are on the way, and which includes aeronautical training. Yes, we, 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 we enter that. 
The first has with assistance from Kobosi's based Grimes Company established a trading computer center that the results in Bodu College Adventure Bodies, which caters for the training of not only the recruits, but scouts, the club members, and members of the public. Another such venture is in the train for the Richard Faikal Police College at Essipoli. I know the Deputy Commissioner Law Enforcement is here with me. We that. They want to thank you. Persons were attacked and robbed by criminals during that period. We also had the shooting of Damien Belgrave and Hatfield Street. Two police ranks have been charged before the, and here before the court. Our concept of operation has already been one of minimum force, constrained and guided by standing orders as well of the code of conduct for law enforcement officers and adopted by the UN General Assembly. We have on stream a number of training programs which aim to foster more professional attitude by ranks. They focus on such areas as conflict resolution, anger management, dealing with people, and policing a multicultural and diverse society and are designed to act as a catalyst for change in the conduct and moral attitude of ranks. However, the use of force in police operations will always be contentious. We also had our difficulties when the lives of some policemen were snuffed out. We had in Borbis, Constable Diana. <coughs> then we had in, a, in a, um, the F division here, we had Letlo, Consulus Letlo and Aaron. They were shot and killed in Parmatatoi area. And then, most recently, we had Consulus Suka, he was a trainee, who was shot and killed during an armed robbery in Tushan. At the time, he was coming in to the college after he had been killed. We have to bear with this. We mourn the losses of our brothers, of our brothers. but our result will remain strong. The attitude of some members of the force towards the public and the deviant behavior of some others, particularly corruption, are of concern to the forces and administration as they impact negatively on the public trust and confidence and the image that we are trying to inculcate. We have been dealing with matters through our Office of Professional Responsibility, yes, Mr. Jamir, which has recently been decentralized to all police individuals for greater effect. We've had 291 complaints last year compared to 244 in 2011. And most of the complaints that we get are around neglect of duty, assault, corrupt practices, including demanding money from the public, bartering to go, bartering to forego charges, and deliberately staying away from attendance at court arising out of the investigation. A number of ranks were charged, some placed before the court, some departmentally. And we sometimes send for advice in these matters. The police force is appreciative of the efforts of and support being given by the Ministry of Home Affairs in dealing with this problem of police corruption. Through the establishment of hotlines and email addresses, where members of the public can make complaints. This is an is in addition to the OPR, the Police Complaints Authority, and the forces who the where citizens can also make their complaints. We find out that we are constraining our efforts to deal with corruption, which is mostly a two-way thing. As members of the public, too add fuel to police corruption by making the approaches. And in most instances, they only report this when the expected results are not obtained. Even then, some persons do not follow up with a statement nor attend court. That's these persons that make the report of police corruption. I want to make it clear that the police force cannot terminate the service of a member of the force on a mere report. We got other things we have to do. We have to kick in with other things. It is ironic that the very members of the public complaining about police corruption are the ones contributing. If you don't give them, you won't get corruption. 
The Ghana Police Force has a lot of dedicated and professional men and women who mm -hmm. do their job with pride. They are genuine and eagerly assist members of the public with their requests for service and protection. Admittedly, there are a few who exhibit deviant behavior, but once found, they are dealt with condemning. Only two days ago, I'm informed that the rank was at the airport. A uh, Chinese who lives in, who resides in Canada, 78 years, went into the toilet. And I know for a fact, when we go into the toilet, it's almost like a take out fire and so on, even then we just forget it to be. And that accord with this 78 year old person. We made a report, police and other persons made a search, and they found the man's 10,500 Canadian and his passport, and they were handed over to the man. Because you're not bad with everything. You have some good ones. And I'm told yesterday that someone wants to come forward to make a contribution to the policeman. Um, I've told the first conference coordinator, you can fit it in somewhere along the line. You don't have a problem. I appreciate it. Through the police public relations department, I've been apprised of the many concerns expressed by citizens by the media in relation to police actions, on noise nuisance, and domestic violence. But I need to say something on this. The police force has for a long time now ad adopted a zero tolerance approach in response to reports of noise nuisance and domestic violence. However, in both issues, we are sometimes timing in relation to prosecution, as affected persons sometimes decline to give statements or come to give evidence in court. As regards with noise nuisance, often the complainant merely wants the music to be torn off or torn down and is reluctant to have the matter prosecuted as he or she has fear of reprisal if the person who does the person that. The fear of reprisal, I must mention, also affects a number of investigations in criminal matters where victims or witnesses are reluctant to attend identification parades. We had a recent case, we had a murder, a murder in Magdoon. The relatives, we had somebody that we positively think committed the act. And the family did not turn up for that identification period. And that's for reasons best known to them. Because you're hearing things, but they have not turned up. So we have to, because after 72 hours we don't release forces, we face a lot of legal battles. The Ghana Police Force puts in place institutional structures at police headquarters to ensure appropriate response to domestic violence reports, which are dealt with privacy and confidential. Your Excellency, despite the challenges the Ghana Police Force has generally done well to return to the right point of view, I have not spoken about a few other areas that we intend to focus on. Looking at piracy, with assistance from the Ministry of Agriculture and stakeholder companies, and violence in schools, with assistance from the Ministry of Education. As if something happens at the school and the police go to the school, you are However, there is much work to be done this year and the years ahead. And with the awareness that there will always be challenges in law enforcement, we will continue to work assiduously to ensure that citizens feel safe in the society and continue their legitimate activities to build a country of peace, progress, and prosperity. 